Okay, so this is de Moivre's theorem. So once you know how to get your complex number into polar form, and if you're unsure how to do that, then go see the video explaining exactly how to do that. Once you have it in polar form, then this is exactly what the way it is in the log tables. You are able to get any complex number to a power by applying this. Or will then be to that power, and then you will do cos of n times that angle. So we're going to see this in action now, and it's very straightforward once you have, as I said, that complex number written in that polar form. Okay, so take this example, where we want to calculate 1 plus root 3i to the power of 9. So the first thing we want to do is get 1 plus root 3i in polar form. And 1 plus 3, 3i in polar form works out to be 2 cos 60 degrees plus i sine 60 degrees. And go ahead and check that out, that you can do that yourselves. As I said, there's a previous video on that of exactly how to convert any complex number into polar form. So now we have it in polar form in order to then apply de Morf. So in other words, I want to do to a power of 9. De Morf says all I need to do then, if I have it in polar form, is do my or, in other words, my 2 to the power of 9, and then cos n times the angle. Now, just be careful with brackets here because um, it's going to be 9 times 60, okay? So just in case you might put it in separately on the calculator, the calculator might read it as 9 times 60 unless you have the full bracket around the full angle. So plus i sine and then 9 times 60 degrees here as well. It's n times theta and n times theta. So that ends up being 2 to the power of 9 cos 540 degrees plus i sine 540 degrees. And that is it in polar form. But if they asked you to evaluate it in Cartesian form, then what we would do is work out cos 550 uh, sorry, 540 on the calculator, cos 540 degrees on the calculator works out to be minus 1, plus i, and then sine 540 degrees on the calculator works out to be 0. So i times sine 540 degrees is i times 0. So as I said, this is the answer in polar form, but if they want it in rectangular form or Cartesian form, you actually do that calculation on the calculator. You work out the cause and the sine of that angle. And then evaluating this, 2 to the power of 9 times minus 1 is then minus 512. And obviously 0 times i is 0. So that is actually the answer, which also can be written like that either. Okay, so try 1 minus i to the power of 4. Okay, so pause the video and uh, see how you get on with this one and then replay when you feel you have got the answer or need a little bit of nudge in the right direction. So the first thing you need to do is get 1 minus i in polar form. I'm going to jump straight to that because, as I said, we've done another video on that. You can go ahead and work it out in full. Um, and check that you get the following answer. So 1 minus i in polar form works out to be uh, root 2 times cos 315 degrees plus i sine 315 degrees. And so now 1 minus i to the power of 4 applying de Moivre is going to be root 2 to the power of 4 and then cos of 4 times 315 degrees plus i sine 4 times 315 degrees. And so working that out then, I get 4 cos 1260 degrees plus i sine 1260 degrees. This is it in polar form. Um, if they wanted it in polar form, but also they wanted the angle in radian form, then what you would do is take your angle and multiply by pi over 180. 
And so we would get 4 times cos 7 pi plus i sine 7 pi. So there are your two versions in polar form. And if they asked for it then in Cartesian form, what we need to do then is evaluate this. So if you're evaluating this, you need to make sure that your calculator is in radians, or if you're evaluating it in uh, degrees, in other words, your angle is in degrees, make sure your calculator is in degrees. So either way, what we would get is four times cos of the angle 1260 uh, works out <clears throat> to be minus one, and cos of or sorry, sine of 1260, or in radian form, sine of 7 pi, works out to be 0. So what we end up with is minus 4 plus 0 i. Now, there is something very important that we have to also consider with de Moiv, and that is if the power is a fraction. If the power is a fraction, we have to consider the fact that there is going to be multiple solutions here, okay? Now, the reason there's multiple solutions is if I just bring it back to a simple little example where you would have had maybe um, x squared is equal to something. Well, if we were solving this, we would say then, well, x is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of whatever that is. And another way of writing the square root, of course, is plus or minus, whatever that is, to the power of a half. And this is where we're getting a power that is a fraction. And if it's a power of a half, we already know with our algebra that if you've got a power of two, you should be getting two solutions. So we know to put a plus or minus uh, and then this value to the power of a half. And there are your two solutions. So. That's the kind of idea behind this. If you have a power that is a fraction, it's coming from something that obviously is going to have two solutions. If it's a power of a half, if it's a power of a third, there would be three solutions, power of a quarter, four solutions, and so on. So the way that we're going to deal with this uh, when it is in polar form is... Let's say you have your a plus bi to the power of something, and straight away you spot that that something is a fraction. Then what we're going to do is, when we put it in full polar form, we are going to immediately add on 360n to both the angles. And the reason we do that comes back to our trigonometry, we know from our graphs that the cos angle, the cos curve, should I say, repeats itself every 360 degrees. The way to get multiple solutions is to always add on 360 degrees and however many uh, rotations we need will determine how many different solutions we need. So straight away, the minute you realize that's a fraction, add the 360n onto your angle. All right, so let's this, see this um, in play. So we're going to take the example. If z squared is equal to minus 2 minus 2 root 3i, and they're asking you to solve for z, how are we going to do that? So pause the video wherever you feel comfortable to be able to carry on yourself. Um, maybe you need the first couple of lines from me before you feel that you're able to finish it. Uh, wherever you do, pause it and see what you can do yourself. I'm going to jump through the polar form bit exactly because we have, as I said, done it before in a previous video and it'll just speed up the process here. So if I have z squared is equal to this and I'm looking for the values of z, um, then the first thing I'm going to do is z therefore is equal to that to the power of a half. So here's where we're getting our fraction. This then is what I want to work out. So the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is get minus 2 minus 2 root 3i in polar form. And so minus 2 minus 2 root 3i in polar form works out to be 4 times cos 240 degrees plus i sine 240 degrees. 
So I hope you were able to get that using your polar form method. Now we have it in polar form. We are going to apply Demorph. And because we know it's a power of a half, immediately what I'm going to do is add on 360N. Now keep the brackets around those angles because that's an angle in its entirety. So be careful there. Uh, and it's all to the power of a half. Okay. So what we're going to do next to get, we know with the power of a half, we should be looking at two solutions here. Um, you'll only end up repeating anyway uh, if, if you forget how many solutions you're supposed to have. Uh, as we go through the next process, you'll see exactly how we get our answers. And as I said, you'll repeat answers if you've gone too far anyway. So you'll know to stop. So when we have this in this form to get our different solutions, we put in uh, first of all, n equals zero. This is exactly what we would have done in trig, if you remember. So I'm going to sub in zero now for this, and I'm going to apply de Moiv at the same time. So remember with de Moiv, your power comes down and then it gets multiplied to the angle. Now there's lots going on with the angles here. So as I said, watch out with the brackets. Be very, very careful. It's so easy at this point here to make a little slip because uh, it can get quite tedious. <clears throat> So we have four to the power of a half and then cos times a half, 240 degrees plus 360 and n is zero. Okay, so look at lots of brackets, be very, very careful. Plus I sine a half, 240 degrees plus 360 times zero. Okay, so take your time evaluating. Fourth power of a half, first of all, is two. And then cos a half, 240 plus 360 times zero. Well, 360 times zero is zero. So you're only left with 240 then. And I'm gonna get half of that in my next step. Don't try and do too many steps in one go because that often leads to errors. Again, same here, 360 times zero is zero. So you're just left with 240 there. And so that's going to be cos of 120 plus I sine 120. And that's your answer in polar form. Change to radians if you need to, if the question is required. Or Cartesian form then is going to be multiplying out by the two and doing the cos, evaluating the cos 120 and sine 120 on the calculator. So cos 120 on the calculator works out to be minus a half. And sine 120 on the calculator works out to be root 3 over 2. And of course, you have your times i. And now multiply in by the 2, and I'm left with minus 1 plus root 3i. And there's one of my solutions. Okay, so now to get the next solution, what I'm going to do is, it was n equals 0 for the first solution. Now it's going to be n equals 1 for the second solution. As I said, just like you would have done from multiple solutions solving for trig. So... It's going to be fourth power of a half, cos, you have the half brought down, of course, 240 degrees plus 360 times one this time. Again, watch those brackets. Sine uh, a half, 240 degrees plus 360 times one. Okay, so that evaluates to two, cos, a half, and now this time, 240 degrees plus 360 times 1 is 360. So 240 plus 360 works out to be 600. Same here. And now half of 600 is 300. So then and only then when you've evaluated all of this will you actually get uh, the final angle uh, again there you are in polar form and to get it into cartesian form we're going to evaluate cos 300 on the calculator and cos 300 on the calculator works out to be a half and 
sine 300 on the calculator works out to be minus root 3 over 2 and of course don't forget your i. Multiply in by the 2 and we have 1 minus root 3 i and there is your second solution. If you went n equals 2, because if you were looking for a third solution, if it was a power of a third, you would just do n equals 2 and so on. In this case, if I did it by accident, not realizing I could stop because I've got two solutions, whenever there's a power of a half, you only need two solutions, you would just end up with one of these back again. So you'll, you'll know to stop, as I said, you'll repeat. Power of a half is two solutions, power of a third would be three solutions, power of a quarter, four solutions, and so on. And there's your two, therefore, final answers.